Hello everyone, so this is how I'm going to start my abscess video. And the last horse right there is my very needy, very sad, very lame, abscessed mare. Hi Hollywood. Hi Hollywood. Alright. So this is the lame horse. Let's see. Hollywood. Walk on for people. Let's see. She's lame on the front left as is very obvious. Currently she's without a shoe on it and she normally wears a shoe on both front feet so that's contributing to this limping as well as the fact that she has a hole in her foot. Okay so oh yeah uh, that right there is where the abscess was cut out. That is some flesh. Um, it's hard to see. It's a little bit dirty right now. Um, I need to soak it again but right now the water shut off to the barn because it's cold. But uh yeah Oh yeah, she's really messy. She left me a really great stall too. Thanks, Hollywood. Really appreciate. But uh, I'll show you all how I soak it in a little bit. All right, beast. No, get your nose out of there. Uh -uh. So uh, first of all, hey, Hollywood. Pick the foot clean. Grab some Epsom salt. And then put a little bit in there. That's probably a bit too much. That's a good amount. Iodine. Pour it in there. That's probably good, just enough to cover the bottom. And then warm water, which probably would move. Warm water. Take the fending foot and put it in the bucket. And allow them to soak for 15 to uh, 20 minutes. So, all right. Hey guys, so this is how I figured I would finish my abscess video um, is with a little bit of an explanation of how you can detect an abscess um, and alternate ways to soak it because not every horse soaks their foot, as well as a little bit um, of explanation about what everything kind of does. So first of all, the detection of an abscess. Um, Hollywood's, I do not have this on film because she actually did it while I was gone, but um, usually a horse will start off by coming, becoming lame. Uh, not every horse will become lame with every abscess. Like it kind of just depends on the location and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes they may even blow an abscess without you ever even knowing it. Um, so don't always be too concerned about this. My horse, as I will always, always tell people, is a giant baby about her feet. Um, she has very, very thin soles. They were actually thinner when I bought her, and they've grown in toughness since I've had her, but they're still very, very thin, which is why we keep her shod in the front. Um, so every time she gets an abscess, she definitely shows it. The first thing you're going to notice is that your horse starts being lame. Their head will limp. Um, and you can trot them and you can see which leg is lame, which I feel like that should be a different video with like a different kind of example, but they'll be lame. And then go ahead and check the leg, see if there's any heat swelling or obvious cuts. If not, um, and it's definitely not like in the shoulder, so like watch them when they move, see when they're kind of having the pain response. And if they're not having it in the shoulder, there's no heat or swelling or pain response within the leg, then generally it's gonna be in the foot. Um, and at that point, either you or someone who you trust, because I don't really recommend you doing this your, by yourself the first time, um, get some hoof testers and squeeze around and see if you can't find a spot that's softer slash um, the horse gives you a pain response, meaning they jerk real quick when you squish down on it. Um, and I say don't do it by yourself the first time just because one, it's hard to handle, and two, you don't want to squeeze too hard and accidentally bruise your horse's foot. Um, and three, you want to know the places to squeeze and test. Um, I myself, I can use them a little bit, but I don't squeeze very hard, and my horse gives a very big pain response. I don't recommend everyone trying to use hoof testers, at least not the first time. Have someone show you. Um, let's say that you get a pain response finally, and you go, okay, so it's uh, something in the foot. Typically then it's going to be an abscess. You go ahead and you call the farrier. Um, for abscesses, calling the vet really isn't that helpful. They're just gonna tell you, well, you're probably gonna have to pull the shoe and have that cut open, but the vets don't really cut open the hoof that often unless it's like a surgery. So call your farrier, plus it's gonna be cheaper. 
and they'll go ahead and if they have to remove the shoe, they'll remove the shoe or they'll just go in and start cutting and they'll cut it open and they'll allow it to drain and I'll insert a picture right about here. where you can see it, this is Hollywood's after it was drained. Um, you can see that is blood and pus. Sorry, if somebody gets a little bit grossed out, but yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, that's a really big one, but that's what it looks like is the blood and pus and now come out of the hoof and you allow that to drain. Um, and that's when you also, like the first time you find the abscess before the fairy even comes out, go ahead and start soaking it in the, um, in the Epsom salt and hot water to try and draw the abscess down to the bottom of the hoof. And then after it's popped, start adding the uh, betadine into the mixture along with the Epsom salt to try and draw up more infection with the salt as well as the salt and betadine both to start to clean the wound and kill all the bacteria so you don't get a secondary abscess. You don't want mud getting trapped up in there. Otherwise you might get a second one or a third one and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, all right, so the last thing is alternate soaking methods. Um, so not every horse is quite as good at, as Hollywood at keeping their hoof in a bucket. So some other things you can try if your horse is one of the quote unquote problem horses. First of all, use a shallower um, soaking thing. Uh, my soaking bin is actually pretty tall and a lot of horses as they pick their hoof up will knock it over. So if you get a shallower one, that can work really well for some people because then they can't really spill it and you can just keep putting it in there and telling them good boy slash good girl every time the hoof goes in the bucket and you can give a lot of positive reinforcement and get them and train them better to keep it in there um, without wasting a lot of resources. Um, you can also get in, oh, and with the buckets, I always, always, always recommend using a rubber-sided soaking bucket and not a plastic bucket. Um, this is because the plastic buckets can break. Let's say that your horse missteps and they step on it wrong and all of a sudden they've broken this thing and it makes a big noise and it could potentially puncture a hoof. I've just... I just don't trust the plastic buckets to work as well, um, whereas the rubber ones are always going to bend and that's what they're actually made for. So I always recommend using a rubber bucket and you can even get one of the shallow feeding ones and use that as one of your soaking methods if your horse won't keep it in the tall bucket. Um, another thing that I've seen work is getting an old IV bag from your vet. Um, they normally just throw those out. You can get those from them and then get some hay string. So you put all of your stuff into the IV bag, put a hay string around it, stick your horse's hoof into the IV bag, and then tie it on there. So even if they pick the hoof up, they're not really getting it out of the water. Um, I used to actually have to do that with Hollywood till I trained her to actually keep her hoof down. And I've even trained her the command down so that she'll put her hoof back in the water every time. Um, also, I mean, if you can't get an IV bag, any kind of thick bag that you can put on there and then like tie with hay string will work. You just need something that makes it so that they, they can't really remove their hoof from the water, especially if they're one that's going to be real finicky about everything. You don't want to spend your entire 20 minutes having to put the hoof back in and by the end of the time, you're not really sure how long they've actually soaked. Um, so those are some of the alternate meta methods that I've tried. If you have more, please be sure to go ahead and put it down in the comments. Um, and if you have any recommendations or you think I missed something or you think I should cover something more in depth, please go ahead and put that in the comments or go ahead and message me on Tumblr. It's menagerieofchaos.tumblr.com yet again. Um, and I'm so glad that y'all watched this and I hope you didn't get too bored. Um, I'm really happy to talk to y'all and I can't wait till next week. Bye!